Now that we know what linear equations are, let's talk about how to solve them. Today I want to look at two different ways that we can go about solving linear equations. The first way that I want to look at solving a linear equation is what do we do whenever we have something like three times something in parentheses or a negative times something in parentheses. We're going to use what we call the distributive property. The distributive property simply means that we take what's on the outside and multiply it by each piece on the inside. So we're going to take this and multiply that n to the 2, and we're going to take this 3 and multiply it n uh, to the negative 4. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. We're going to take this negative and multiply it by this positive x, and we're going to take the negative and multiply it by this positive 5. So what happens whenever we do that? We get 3 times 2x, well, that's 6x, 3 times negative 4, that's negative 12, equals 7 stays, negative x, negative times x is negative x, negative times positive 5 is negative 5. Now we can just combine like terms, we all know how to do that, so uh, we got this and this, they're the same on this side, nothing else is the same over here, so our next step is to write down that, we have 6x minus 12 equals 7 minus 5 is 2 minus x. Now we want to get all of the x's on one side and everything else on the other side. So let's add x to both sides and we will subtract, add 12 to both sides, add 12 to both sides. So now we have 7x, 7x equals 12 on this side gives us 14. And so now we just divide by 7 and we find that x equals 2. Now, the second method or the second type of problem that I want to look at is a problem where we have a lot of fractions. Now, a lot of people don't like fractions and they, they can be a, a real tricky process. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, uh, what is the least common denominator, the LCD, of this equation? Well, we have 3 and 2 and 4. 3 and 2, the least common denominator for 3 and 2 is 6, but 4 doesn't go into 6, and so uh, then we need to look at, well, 4 and 2 is 8, but 3 doesn't go into 8, so what's the next step up? 3 and 2 and 4, do they all go into 12? Okay, they all go into 12. So our least common denominator here is going to be 12. Now, the question is, what do we do with that? Well, we take our least common denominator and we multiply it by each piece. So we say this piece times 12 this piece times 12, this piece times 12, and this piece times 12. So what's our result whenever we multiply all of those pieces by 12? Well, 12 and 3 is going to reduce. So 12 divided by 3 is 4. So we have 4 times 2x plus 4. 12 divided by uh, our times, 1 half, which is really just 12 divided by 2, is 6. So we have the plus, bring it down, 12 times 1 half is 6, and we have our equal sign. 12 times 1 fourth, or 12 divided by 4, is 3, so we have 3x. And then 12 times 7 over 3, well, that's really 12 divided by 3 times 7, or that's really... 12 times 7, and then you divide it by 3, or you can just do 12 divided by 3 and then multiply the 7. So total divided by 3 is 4, and so that's 7 over 4. We're going to keep this negative sign, and so that's 7 times 4. 
right? Because 12 divided by 3 is 4. Okay, now what do we do? Well, we go back to the distributive property. We need to distribute this 4, and then we combine like terms, and we need to do some multiplication over here. So when we distribute, we get 8x plus 16 plus 6x equals 3x minus 24. I'm sorry, 28. Can't do a multiplication. 7 times 4 is 28, not 24. Okay, now we can combine like terms. We have a x here, an x here, and an x here. So we're going to want to subtract 3x from both sides. And we have a positive 16 there. And so we're going to want to subtract 16 from both sides. And when we do that, we get 11x equals, well, what's negative 28 minus 16? Well, that's really 28 plus 16, but with a negative. So that's really going to be negative 6 and 8 is 4. Carry a 1, a 4, so we have negative 44, which means that x equals negative 4.